Hello and welcome to my video blog for the 4th of July weekend. You know, as fireworks erupt through our country's skylines this entire weekend, you know, I'm reminded of the whole flight situation. You know, of all the different controversies that have been revolving around people trying to take flights recently. The most recent one being there was a young man who was actually asked to leave a plane because he refused to pull up his saggy pants. Then there was the situation of this elderly woman who was asked to remove her adult diaper, even though she had a medical condition, she was asked to remove her diaper for security reasons. Yeah, but it was brought to our attention that this man, someone who's old enough to be someone's grandfather, was allowed to fly in women's lingerie, lingerie and heels. Yeah. And the second time he flew, he wore some disco pants with little cutouts on the side and a little fancy top. Ooh, yeah. Now, let's assess. If you're wearing saggy pants, you're out. If you're wearing adult diapers, you're out. But if you're wearing the lingerie, oh yeah, you're in. What I want to know is when did TSA officials become nightclub bouncers? You know? Like, I thought we were supposed to be flying to friendly skies. You know, this is crazy. I mean, are, are they really at airport security just trying to find all the beautiful people to board the planes? It's a crazy situation. We're on to you. We're on to you, TSA. It's not right. Now, something else that we came to find out this week is that we received some very, very bad news or sad news on Monday regarding Bob Mavoyevich. Yes, he's being sent down the river. He was found guilty of all those 17 charges. And the biggest charge being the fact that he was trying to sell the president's former Senate seat. Now, I'm all about the takeaways, and the big takeaway that we learned from this case is this. If you're trying to sell a Senate seat, don't do it on the phone. Don't take bids over the phone. Put it up on Craigslist. That's what you do. Now, something else that we're all waiting for, like Christmas. We're just waiting. We're just waiting for either the Republicans or for the Democrats to work out this whole budget deficit situation. Somebody work it out. But since they can't work it out because this party doesn't trust that party and that party doesn't trust this party, I think that we should get a very neutral party to do it. Somebody like Susie. Yeah, Susie can do it. Susie can do anything. Who am I talking about? Susie Orman. She can budget cut with the best of them. Get Su Susie Orman to take care of this budget cut situation. She can tell us what we can afford and what we can't afford and what we need to get rid of and what we need to keep. Get Susie on this. Somebody give her a call. She's on every night in the evenings. Just call in. You know, I'm sure she'll, she'll take it and, and work it out. Now, as that's all going on, you know, people are very... Not so happy with the president these days. And we come to find out that the president has something in common with Goldilocks. Remember Goldilocks and the Free Bears? Now, Goldilocks couldn't find the right porridge to eat. And the president has that same problem. He can't find the right bowl of porridge. And he was trying to find the right bowl of porridge regarding this situation in Afghanistan. Like, what should he do about the whole troop removal? How do we bring back the boys and the girls who are over there? How do we wrap the situation up? Well, his uh, plan didn't quite make too many people happy. And that his very deliberate pacing of maybe pulling back a few this year, pulling back another set next year, and then pulling back another set the following year, and maybe wrapping this up in about three, no more than four years, just seemed a little too slow for some. And for others, it just seemed a little too fast. But it's right down the middle, and it just didn't make anybody happy. So what did he do? He took note of that, and this week he came back very fiery, and he came out very specific and finger pointery. 
pointing his fingers at everyone. And this time he was talking about, of all things, the budget deficit. And he said, look, Congress, you know, I can do two things at one time, so can you. Maybe you don't need to go on vacation. Maybe you guys need to be here working this out. Yeah. He got all specific like that. And there were some people who just didn't like his tone. And one of those people who didn't like his tone was Marv Hoffman. Now, Hoffman didn't like his tone and he was very uh, um, vocal about this on MSNBC on the Morning Joe program and he didn't hold back his tongue in that he uh, referred to the president as a male appendage. Yeah, he did. Huh, can't believe he did that. Now, if you don't know, Dick is the proper abbreviation for Richard. Yes, it is not the proper abbreviation for Barack. Just doesn't work out that way. And Hoffman knows better. He's a published author. He is a news editor of all things. That's why MSNBC actually suspended him. And they're not too happy with him right now. So they had to make a point and they wanted to make things very clear that, listen, this is not CNN. You are not Kathy Griffin. Deuces. Yeah. Now, something else we're at one and one makes too is in the state of New York and that they just recently passed the same-sex uh, marriage act and that we have more couples who are able to walk down the aisle and be married and become one. That means that if you're actually going through bridal registries, it's going to be hell because we got more people to comb through. Now you got to find your John and Paul in addition to your, your Mike and Sarah's. You thought Mike and Sarah was hard to find, now you got to find John and Paul. Oh my gosh, it's going to be crazy. But we get to go to the wedding and that's going to be fabulous. Now something else that's fabulous is the fact that Michelle Bachman made it official this week that she is running for president. That means that the news agents also made it official that they're officially going after her. What did they call her to task on? Well, they called her to task on the fact that she's all against the big government. But why are you taking big government's money? Michelle. Then she was called to task on, of all things, her pop culture. And that she mixed up her John Wayne the actor with serial killer John Wayne Gracie, Michelle. Then, of all people, Bristol Palin called her out on her fashion. Yeah, saying that you're looking a lot like my mom these days. Oh yeah. I think Joan Rivers will call that bitch stole my mama's look. It's crazy. I'll see you next time.